Okay, so uh, today we're going to focus our attention on the Meda Datu, the Meda Datu. Um, this is probably the Datu that um, we spend most of our life wishing would not exist um, or was different than how it is um, or are embarrassed by its existence because um, there's so much cultural shame around it. And, um, and so I just really invite us to take a different look at what meta adipose fat tissue is. It's in our bodies for reasons, for very, very good and healthy reasons, right? It wouldn't be there if it didn't serve a purpose. And as it turns out, it serves a very big purpose. It's one of the seven primary tissues of the body. And according to Ayurveda, it's um, very closely linked with mamsa. Uh, mamsa and meda support one another. And um, so I will read from... Vasant's book on the meta datu, the fat tissue. So meta datu or the fat tissue, adipose tissue is a loose connective tissue that includes fat, phospholipids, steroids, such as cholesterol and other types of lipids. During the creation of processed muscle tissue, unprocessed fat molecules are also formed. The fatty tissue is watery and unctuous. It is slimy, soft, and has typical oily characteristic, characteristics. Adipose tissue has a vital function in the cell. It participates in the formation of cell membranes, other structures of the cell, and it also helps to nourish the cells. One of the functions of meta datu as adipose tissue is snehan, lubrication, which provides freedom of movement. Fats are used to build the cell and to store and supply energy for all cellular activity. And meta datu gives us groundedness. In a way, fat acts as a fuel. When you exercise, your body needs some lubricating substance and that lubricant is provided through fat and cholesterol. Cholesterol has a function. It is necessary for lubrication of the tissue and for nourishment of the bones and cartilage, as well as the <clears throat> articular surfaces of the bones. Extremely low cholesterol below 150 is one of the causes of cracking and popping in the joints and may lead to degenerative arthritis and low libido. Lipids include fats, oils, steroids, and other fatty substances. Cholesterol is a lipid from which steroids such as sex hormones are manufactured and it is present in cell membranes throughout the body. There are two kinds of cholesterol, low density lipoprotein and high density lipoprotein. Good, those are the LDL and the HDL, good cholesterol. The L HDL is thoroughly processed cholesterol and LDL is unprocessed cholesterol and has a tendency to deposit on the walls of the blood vessels and create plaque and arterial sclerotic changes. And then he goes on to say that E in moderation enhances good cholesterol or HDL. Fat molecules have similar properties to those of kapha dosha and kapha is present in fat. According to Ayurveda, fat is predominantly water and earth. Remember mamsa was earth and water. So they're like this, they're made up of the same substances just in different proportion. Fat has tremendous capacity to store and yield energy into the system. Gram for gram, carbohydrates cannot give the same amount of energy. Fat molecules yield energy to the cell because they contain water and earth elements, which bring bulk and strength to the body. And I'm talking about fat in the correct proportion. I'm not talking about fat that is in excess. Um, 
if a person consumes too much food and his agni is not strong enough to digest it, the protein and carbohydrates can become fat. And conversely, when a person fasts, the adipose tissue loses fat droplets and shrinks. Meta datu is pres present beneath the skin as subcutaneous fat, the insulating material that maintains body temperature. It is closely connected to mamsa datu, the muscle tissue. Um, and if meta is affected, then mamsa will gradually be affected as well. Fat is also present between the muscles because the muscle fibers move and create friction. Um, there is an, so the fat helps to maintain that glide and allow muscles to move freely and easily. There is an accumulation of fat on round organs, such as the kidneys, liver, spleen, heart, and diaphragm. Fat cells are also round, and behind the eyeball there is fat because the eyes are the body's most active organs. They are constantly moving and they need lubrication, and nature has provided fat to give them freedom of movement. The oment omentum, which is an apron-like structure present in the front as a fold under the stomach in the peritoneal cavity. And this structure is rich in fat. It is the storehouse of meta datu. On the surface of the heart, there is also fat. The heart is an active organ and to prevent friction between the uh, parietal part pericardium and the visceral pericardium, there is a little fat. There's a fat around the joints to protect them. Meta datu serves as a protective cushion for every joint in the body. Under the skin, the fat acts as an insulator, right? And fat, um, uh, to maintain body temperature, fat is a poor conductor of heat and therefore holds heat within the body. In a healthy condition, meta datu takes 20 days to be formed. So just a little review, view. remember the first Datu, which was rakta, that takes, um, or I'm sorry, rasa, that takes five days to form. And then rakta, the blood, that takes 10 days. Mamsa, the third datu, which is muscle, takes 15 days. And now 20 days in, the food that we ate 20 days ago is now supporting the meda tissue, the fat tissue in our body. So there's this very long and slow <clears throat> process of nutritional building of the datus through all seven layers. Fat is necessary to nourish <clears throat> the glandular system, thyroid, parathyroid, adrenals, ovaries, and pituitary. Psychologically, meta datu is related to perception. The superfine molecules of meta datu help to retain healthy and blissful memories. The spiritual function of meta datu creates bliss molecules such as endorphins. So our mudra for today is Jala Mudra, which is the mudra that honors wa the water and the fluidity right, of our being. So as you, so Jala is the pinky finger and the thumb tip touch, and the other three fingers are extended softly out. So sitting for a moment and reflecting while holding Jala Mudra on your Meda. And um, if you haven't considered all the ways in which your Meda um, supports you and nourishes you from the insulation and maintenance of body temperature to, to the lubrication of the joints, to the manufacturing of critical hormones that support us um, in our functioning, not just um, the reproductive hormones, which it's part of as well, and giving rise to our feelings of sexual and sensuality, but also um, those endorphins that give us those feelings of 
of bliss and like natural high. And then how they lubricate and, um, and, and protect the, the individual cells of the body and then also the organs of the body and the eyes. So taking a moment to bless and express gratitude for your Meda Datu. And if you can imagine that your whole body is just, you know, like how you put lotion on on the outside and how good it feels when your skin is super dry and then you either use some very, very nice lotion or some wonderful oil and you give yourself a nice oil or abhyanga massage and the felt sense after of the moisture and the softness and the suppleness and imagine that your entire inner body is lubricated like that. Every cell surrounded by this thin and supportive coating of protection and lubrication in between the joints and between the muscle fibers, no friction, right? all smooth and soothing. And begin to just move as if you were made of oil. How would you move if your whole body had just been bathed in oil and every joint was well lubricated? Can you begin to move like that? And this is our bhavana for our practice today that we're going to practice moving fluidly, oily, unctuously, which also has a sensual quality to it, does it not? Right? Contrasting how we moved when we were identifying with Mamsa two days ago. And now feeling ourselves as Meda. Okay. Take another little bit just to explore the sensuality and the fluidity, the adaptability and the flow of yourself as pure meta. And then in a, in a fluid, oily kind of fashion, you're going to bring yourself onto your back. For a little fluid flow. So we're going to start with a little mini kind of pendiculation of flexing the spine. So I'm kind of tucking my tailbone. I'm not moving into bridge, not yet, but just a little bit of a lift of the buttocks as the lumbar curls. And I'm gonna just softly extend in a round configuration with my arms, um, the arms up, kind of like I'm holding a basket, not hard and linear, right? Soft and round and lifting the chin. And then I'm gonna fluidly expand the arms out and arch the back gently so that I'm doing this flexion extension with the spine, but with this sense of flow 
and roundness so that there's not any hard edges on either side. There's a soft quality to the flexion and even in the extension of the spine with my chin lifted and a little arch in the neck, there's, there's no jagged edges. Everything has been, has been smoothed over with oil. So starting with just feeling the spine, the, the joints of the spine lubricated and moving softly, easily, smoothly in one direction and the other. And then this time as you come into the flexion, you're gonna lift your knees and you can lift a little bit more. So you're kind of moving into a little ball and then as you place your feet down, you can begin to move into more of a bridge and lift the buttocks and maybe sweep the arms a little further. So it's gonna be an organic movement, but again, there's a round and fluid quality in both directions, keeping the joints very soft and out of the range of strain. And of course, with all of this, you. You work in the range that feels easeful and supportive and useful for you. So back and forth, the feet come off the floor, the hands are on either side as you kind of scoop in to a little curl. And then as you expand out into bridge, the arms can sweep full circle if that feels good or just part way. If that's better for your shoulders. This so next time you come into the curl, extending the legs and reaching the hands more up towards the feet and then circling the arms, bringing the feet down and then circling up into bridge and the arms sweep up again. So the arms will take two sweeps. So you're gonna exhale and curl in, lifting the legs and then circle the arms back, place the feet down, circle the arms down, and then press down into bridge and circle the arms up. And of course it's, you know, I'm, I'm creating this movement that feels organic and natural in my body. And you might have your own particular rhythm and variation on this theme. So it's not about matching my movements exactly, but feeling the fluidity as we explore bigger and more dynamic movements and finding your way into that sense of flow, of fluidity within you. All right, so from here, this next time that you come down into bridge, or come up into bridge and then come down out of bridge. You're gonna keep the feet on the floor and the movement is gonna be taking the, the knees apart and the arms out in sort of a, a bridge butterfly. So you're gonna bridge up with the knees apart, arms apart. And then that's inhale. As you exhale, you're gonna cross your arms softly so that your hands are giving a little hug around the shoulders and the elbows are up towards the ceiling, curl down, and you're gonna just rotate your knees to the right, your elbows and your head to the left, and then back to center. And then your knees just go a little bit. You're not going into a deep twist. Feet are on the floor and it's just a little hint of rotation, knees to the left, elbows and nose to the right, and then back to center, open the arms, open the knees outward, right? Bridging up and then exhale. You can cross the arms the other way as you curl down and now start with the knees to the left, head and elbows to the right, back to center, and then alternate and do that slight gentle rotation in the other direction. Open the legs. Open the arms, bridge up, exhale, curl down, cross the arms and knees right, elbows 
left, center, alternate. You can also alternate the turn of the head in the opposite direction of the elbows. And that works with the muscles of the neck a little bit differently, bridging up and one more time, curling down and working with the rotation, knees and elbows go in opposite direction. And the head turns either the same direction as the elbows or the opposite. And then this time, keep your spine down, sweep your arms in a big wide circle and then find them resting down by your side. From here, you're gonna to wanna to roll your mat up so that your feet are on the floor or carpet, but not on a sticky surface. So I just kind of pull it up so it's, it's under my, I mean, my butt's on the floor, not on the mat, but it's kind of like underneath my thighs and my feet are on the floor. So I can start to do this rotational movement with the hips. So you're gonna start with your heels in towards the buttocks. And then the first position is to heel glide out, extend the legs straight out and then straddle them wide and then keep them wide and gather the heels in, in the wide position and then glide the heels and the thighs back together to your starting point. So I'm taking this like four positions, right? Like straight, extended straddle wide, wide with knees bent, and then folded back to center, heels in line basically um, with the sit bones. And then you can begin to do that movement in more of a fluid circular fashion, right? So it's not so linear. And think about the ball joint of the hip and how well lubricated, hopefully it is. And the movement can help to lubricate it even more, but consider the meta dot two that supports all of this capacity for movement in the hip joints. And then you can begin to spin your circle the other way. So from the starting point, you go out wide with the knees bent and then into straight leg straddle and then squeeze the legs together in extended position and then glide the heels back in towards the buttocks. Circling, almost like you're swimming with your lower body, like you're in water. You're made of water and earth. And as if you are moving in water, everything smooth and lubricated. And then just when you complete whatever circle you're on, just take a moment to pause there, bring your hands into Jala Mudra once again, pinky finger to the thumb tip, and just feel the effect of this fluid movement, sort of honoring of the articulation of the joints in this very soft, smooth, oily way. And of course the mamsa, the muscle tissue is being touched and moved and affected by all of this as is the rakta and the rasa. All the datus are blessed with the movement, but moving from and with the intention to honor and give reverence to meta datu the fatty tissue within us. And then rolling to your side and from your side, you can bring your hands out of the mudra. If you're comfortable having your head rest on the floor, it's fine to rest it on the floor. If you feel like you need a little bit of support with a blanket, you can put a blanket underneath the head on the side. So you're gonna start <coughs> with shoulder glides where you're <coughs> gonna actually Take your top arm and flatten the palm towards, uh, as if towards the opposite wall and just kind of like cross yourself forward. As you do that, let your head and, and, and neck turn. So your nose turns towards the floor. Feel the protraction of the shoulder blade moving away from the spine. And then circling, soft elbows, soft shoulders, soft wrists, soft, soft fingers, 
from the center of the body, you're circling and rotating the upper body back into a little twist. So you're gonna move with your exhale into the shoulder glide, pressing forward, forehead resting towards the floor because the head turns and then rolling on the head, everything rolls and turns back. So I've got my right side up. So I'm turning back to the right in the twist and then rotating and rolling back to the left as I do the shoulder glide press. Okay. So rolling in and out and I'm not staying in the twist and find the circular movement overhead. You're doing sort of half circles overhead. At no point does the arm go into like full extension, like a line, right? Like an arrow. We're not arrows today, you know? Keeping the, the idea of the roundness of the fat tissue, right? And the way that it surrounds the round cells and the way it surrounds the round organs and the round eyes. Let's find our are the roundness within us and honor that. Okay, and then from here, begin to bring the lower body into it and begin to add some hip circles. You're actually not gonna go into the full twist, but extending the arm and the leg and circling, finding again, the rotation, these two round joints, circular joints, right? The hip joint and the shoulder joint and a fluid movement going in one direction and you can change your circle so you're going in the opposite direction. Feeling all of the muscles also gliding as you shift the position. But the saw extension, not a hard, ambitious extension. Right? And then softly, fluidly rolling yourself onto your back and pausing there and just feeling the side that you were just working, noticing how it feels and how it feels relative to the other side. I would describe my right side is feeling kind of plump and full and yeah, hydrated. So then go ahead and roll to your second side. You're gonna start with the shoulder glides where you're pressing your palm forward and allowing your, your whole upper body, including your neck and your head to rotate inward so I'm looking down towards the floor and then circling soft rotation back to the left and then rotating forward as I exhale to the right so again you might be working with your other side that's fine finding your way in and out that feels smooth and soft, I'm just gliding my hand on the floor, I'm not even attempting to lift it because it's about the fluidity of the movement and keeping the joints feeling that sense of lubrication. It's not about pushing into the muscles. And just notice the orientation, if you have the orientation to think of um, the push into the muscles as opposed to moving with a sense of fluidity in the joints and how different it might be to move that way. And then adding the side hip circles with the leg and the arm, and finding your way through that fluid action on the side of the body with the breath. Again, it's a soft extension. You can shift directions and notice how it feels if you spin your circle, your hip and your arm in the other direction. 
inhale the spine and the joints of the spine respond. There's a little extension in the spine, a little relaxation in the spine as we move through the movement and keeping the spine fluid too. And then relaxing for a moment on your side and just feeling the pulsations and the experience of that movement before fluidly transitioning and finding yourself coming up onto your hands and knees for chakra vakasana. And a nice fluid chakra. And feel like maybe you just wanna keep the elbows on the floor for a little bit and just move through the pelvis and feel the glutes. You know, we have these parts of our body that have more meta datu than other parts of our body. And they're often the parts of our body that we kind of view with some disdain or some sense of dissatisfaction. Either there's not enough or there's too much. So can you just honor the glutes, the buttocks, as you move them and as you come forward with the chest, again, whatever um, adipose tissue you have in the mammary area. It's not about how much, right? It's just, it's they're there, it's there for a reason and just honoring it. Just for this practice, can you find a way into just accepting and appreciating you know, the extra layers of support and um, lubrication under the arms. Ladies, can you love and appreciate the extra layers of adipose tissue under the arms? All right, and then finding your way down to your belly and um, you might wanna have a little bit of a cushion, a blanket or something under your pelvis, but with your spine um, stable and supported. So you don't wanna be sort of hanging off the edge of um, whatever cushion, cushioning you put under your spine. Um, bringing your hands softly down low. So my elbows are bent and then my palms are down on the floor, but there's just the soft contact with the floor. Shoulder blades are drawn down and in. Lift the chest, lift the legs and begin to do some circular movement with the legs, with the hips, from the hips. So instead of like a linear movement, like Vimanasana, out in, out in, can you work with a circular or more of an ellipse-like movement? in the back extension. The hands are just offering a soft support for the upper body, right? And go a little bit in both directions that way. And then rest down and bring your hands maybe 10 degrees forward. Again, palms are wide. I don't have a tight um, fold or angle at my elbows. There's a, uh, a nice open angle position there. And I can lift up a, my chest a little bit more strongly, give a little more of that. I'm using my mamsa, my muscles in my upper body to support a little more lift. And then again, bringing the legs off the floor and hip circle, circling, circling, circling a few times in each direction. It's different to move from the feet and the ankles than to actually direct the movement from the hips and all of the muscles around the hip joint. Good, and rest down. And then bringing your hands maybe another five or 10 degrees forward. Again, there's still this kind of wide platform, but a little bit more of a lift of the chest while still creating the space so the shoulders 
can be down away from the ears and lifting. And again, modifying. If any of these positions just don't feel right for your back. So we have a little Mamsa and Nada combined work here, right? There's strong muscular action, but can you still maintain the soft fluidity and easeful quality within that? And then release yourself down, bring your arms down by your side. Settle your breath. And now <clears throat> we're gonna swim on land. So alternating right arm, left leg, and then left arm, right leg. And I'm looking to the left as my left arm sweeps out and back. And I'm looking to the right as my right arm sweeps out and back and then rolling a little bit to side to side. You can get off with the rhythm of opposite arm and leg. No worries, it happens. Just notice that it does take a lot of work to swim on land. Good, and then resting down. <clears throat> with the forearms on the floor, feet to the floor, lifting yourself up fluidly. And then again, in a fluid manner, gliding your hands back towards your knees. So you find yourself preparing to come into a squat, toes curled under. You can press your knees off the floor. Walk your hands in, slowly begin to straighten the legs and come into Uttanasana. No hurry. And a little continuous gliding flowing movement there. And then gently bringing yourselves up to stand. And bringing your hands into Jala Mudra again, pinky to the thumb and feel the Meda within you. Feel how it, how it is to move as if you are completely well-oiled. With that image of like lotion has been applied everywhere on the inside. And then stepping your feet wide apart and turning your right leg out and your left leg in, keeping your hands in Jala Mudra. And, you know, so Kapha Dosha made up of water and earth right? Feeling that density, there's the strength provided by Meta, right? And the groundedness provided by Meta. So we're going to just do this little bending of the right knee and kind of leaning and reaching a little to the right, and then extending the right leg and circling back to the left under, it's like you're scooping under in both directions, right? And just Finding that flow, the front leg extends as you reach back and the front knee bends as you extend over to the side. Finding the fluidity, the flow, and also feeling the groundedness and the strength within the movement.
and then coming over into the forward lean and begin to just stay there and just circle the arms while you're in that side bend, like a sort of in between Parjvakanasana and warrior two. Right, so you're in, you're not right upright, a little bit leaning back. Good. And then coming up, extending the leg, lean back, and same thing, holding the strength and the groundedness through the lower body, fluidity. Right. In the upper body. And then bringing yourself to center, feet parallel, pause, feel, settle the breath. And then turning the left leg out and the right foot in. And begin with that under scoop, the scooping under and leaning to the left and then extending the left leg as you lean back to the right. So your side to side. Jala mudra in the hands. And even the fingers can be soft and watery. Those joints lubricated as well. And this time, as you come over to the left and staying there and circling with the arms. Fluidity, you can even feel it through the whole upper body, the sense of fluidity and ease and the stability down below, right? Mamsa and Maida supporting one another in stira and sukha. And then coming up and over to the other side. Front leg extended, right as you lean back. Little side bend back, sweeping and sweeping. And then returning to center, bringing the feet parallel, pause. and a soft bend to the knees as you fold forward into prasarita and you can release the mudra from the hands and begin to just sway or circle the hips side to side or in more of a round or even figure eight kind of configuration. And can that translate up into your spine? So rather than the spine being held rigid, Again, can you oil up those joints? Remember there's meta in between every single vertebra. Okay, every muscle of the spine. And then taking your hands over to one direction and moving your hips in the other direction. So I've got my hands reaching over to towards my left foot, I'm bending my right knee, and I'm kind of circling in my right hip. So my right knee is flexing a little bit more and a little bit less as I circle and get that little side extension. And then I'll slide my hands over to the right, bend my left knee a little more, a little less, right leg stays extended and do that kind of circular movement in my left hip with the side stretch in the forward fold. And then back to center and just spending another few moments with the weight evenly balanced, spine centered, and yet still there's 
an undulating fluidity in the body. And then grounding, wading through the legs as you inhale softly, soft knees and bring yourself up and release the arms back down and come and stand in Tadasana, Jala Mudra, feeling the earth and the water and the oil within you. And then coming down to your knees. And you may want um, to have a couple of blocks behind you. It's up to you. Um, I found this morning it was just a softer and easier way of working with this. So we're going to just move fluidly and softly in and out of uh, Ustrasana, but again, the purpose isn't to get hard or fixed or deep or intense, but more of just how it feels to undulate in and out in a very soft way, fluidly articulating the vertebra of the spine Can have the arms in whatever position is most useful for you. And if going back at all is, I mean, you can have your hands on the floor, you can just keep the buttocks down and work that way, right? You can have your hands on a chair, right? Or holding the legs of a chair behind you if that's, right? So it's more of just feeling fluidity even here. And the neck fluid as well, like the head doesn't get just kind of stuck in one position. Shoulders can cut forward and back. So how is it to move in a snake-like fashion, right? In and out. And then bringing yourself forward and coming in and out in the same way in child's pose. So circling down and then back up again. So there's that easeful flexion in the hands, just glide across the floor. It's not even like a full Vajrasana. I mean, if it's easier for you to do Vajrasana because of your knees, that's fine too. And then just resting in a wide-legged child's pose where your forehead can rest easily, comfortably, hands, shoulders, arms, comfortable. And as you're there, a little bit of a soft and easeful undulation, there's still that fluid and agility, the flow, the watery flow of movement within, even the smallness of the posture. So it's little micro undulations, rivers of flow. And then bringing yourself gently onto your back. And as you come onto your back, bring your feet off the floor, one hand on each knee and little baby hip circles, moving the knees away from one another and back together again. Our knees moving in the same direction, a combination of those hands on the knees so that there's that soft support. Whatever other 
kinds of counter poses you would like to use now to bring your body into a place where you can rest fully in Shavasana. And as you extend the legs out um, before, uh, actually before you take uh, whatever props you might need for Shavasana, if you extend the legs out on the floor and just do some of those soft ankle pumps. And again, allow your whole body to feel like it's just, you know, it's, it's just, just nothing but meta and it can just wiggle and jiggle like as if you were, had no, no bones, no asti, no mansa, no muscle. It's just, you're pumping your feet, your ankles forward, back, forward, back, forward, back. And the rest of the body just wiggles and jiggles freely, receiving the pulse and of the pump of the ankles. and then gradually slowing the pump and then resting in Shavasana. And you are welcome if you would like to hold Jala Mudra, to stay connected to the bhavana of the meta, the water element within you. Gently direct your breath to your pelvic area, which is the home of the water element and the belly, which is the home or the storage center for Meta Datu. <coughs> Just steeping yourself in the qualities of water, the fluidity of water, the buoyancy of water, the nourishment of water hydration of water. Take some time to sense the Meta Datu bathing all of your pelvic organs with nourishing energy, supporting your reproductive system and functioning optimally. Supporting your urinary system, your bladder, your kidneys. And supporting the filtering action of the kidneys that helps to purify your entire bloodstream. Considering the quality of meta datu, the fluidity that optimizes elasticity of your arteries and allows your circulatory system to function more efficiently. And the fluidity provided by meta datu that su supports the channels of your lymphatic system 
to allow for free flow and release of toxins and waste products from the cells to keep them clean and healthy. Consider how Meta Datu supports and nourishes the functioning of all the vital organs surrounding the liver, the spleen, the stomach, the pancreas, and even on the inside of the stomach lining, providing a mucosal layer to protect the stomach from stomach acid. Consider how Meta Datu supports and lubricates all the muscles and the tendons and the ligaments of your body so that you can move as we've been moving today with fluidity, with suppleness. Allowing for your joints to be lubricated so that they also can articulate with ease and with a lack of friction. Consider Meta Datu's fluidity on the level of your thoughts and your feelings, supporting those blissful memories and blissful experiences in your life, bringing you to more of a sense of sattva, of ease and serenity, mentally and emotionally. Consider how Meda Datu, in fact, helps to keep you from becoming too rigid or fixed or stubborn around a particular issue or idea or belief, but gives you the capacity to adapt and adjust and consider and reflect on multiple perspectives. Consider how the buoyancy of Meda Datu, in fact, keeps you afloat, keeps you moving, and yet also maintaining center and groundedness, providing you with substance, even as challenges arise. Blessing Meda Datu. Om Meda Datu. Namaha. And then as you feel ready to transition, can you transition in a way that continues to honor Meta Datu?
fluidly, supplely, sensually transitioning. And as you come to sit again, bringing your hands into Jala Mudra. And just sensing, sensing all the datus that we've connected with over the last couple of weeks, starting with rasa, the plasma, and the lymph, and the rakta, the blood. the mamsa, the muscle, and then the meta, the fat. Notice that each has their own unique characteristics, their own signature, their own unique way of supporting and nourishing us and the interrelatedness between them and how the combination supports us physically, <clears throat> mentally, and emotionally, and spiritually in sustaining stira, stability, and sukha, ease. And bringing your hands gently into Anjali Mudra. And Namaste. Thank you.